Hi, welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting a line and wash using this photograph that I found on Pixabay of Fanad Head Lighthouse, I think, in Ireland. It's really beautiful, uh, but I'm going to really simplify it. And here you see um, the pencil drawing. And as you can see, I've ignored most of the detail and just got a single line for the distant mountains, a single line for the horizon and the sea line and then very simplified buildings with the lighthouse and the associated buildings a little car maybe the lighthouse keeper's car um, and then the foreground um, I've simplified the steps and the path leading from the lighthouse and then just roughed in a rough position of the rocks this is all you need really to start with, is something that's accurate, but very, very simple um, as a starting point for a painting. Um, and the reason it needs to be accurate is that for a line and wash, um, most of the hard work in the painting is done by the line work um, using ink or fine liners, um, that sort of thing. And so if your pencil sketch is accurate, then all you have to do is go over it with ink or fine liners and um, you'll have a really nice accurate line drawing to paint over. And of course, because we're going to paint this, our ink or fine liners need to be waterproof. And I'm going to be using Pigma Micron pens and maybe a Faber-Castell pit pen. Both are waterproof and really nice. They come in a range of different size nibs, which can be useful for this sort of drawing, um, along with brush pens and um, chisel tip pens, that sort of thing. So you can select the kind of pens that you like for um, your line work, um, whether or not you like them to be very, very fine if you like a lot of detail or just sort of a medium fineness and a thick brush pen if, like me, you like to just um, rough in the outline and then darken up the shadows with a thicker pen. So I'm using um, Saunders Waterford cold pressed paper it's 140 pound weight and it's taped to my board with ordinary decorators masking tape. Now my board is clipped to my table easel or my desk easel and it's um, set at an angle of about 45 degrees um, because that's I'm most comfortable drawing and painting at that angle. But also when I come to paint, then gravity will help the washes to run down and spread across the page um, when I start to paint wet in wet. But now you can see I'm beginning to build up the line drawing going over my simplified pencil marks with the fine liner um, and the wider nibbed fine liners to get in the shadows. Um, with line and washers, if you've seen some of my line and washes here before I think you know I do like to do quite quite a lot of heavy dark shadows that's part of my style um, that may, may not be to everyone's taste but it's the way that I like to do it so if you'd rather let the paint do the work of the darks then just leave out some of these shadows and then you can put more darks in when you come to paint but I like to let the fine liner ink work um, give me all my strongest contrasts and my darkest darks. The unpainted paper will be my lightest lights. And then when I come to paint, it's mostly going to be mid-tones. But in this instance, I will build up some nice dark hues because the photograph is quite dramatic. It's sort of twilight um, scene, I think. So I'm going to be trying to bring a similar sort of ambience to the painting as there is in this beautiful photograph. Um, the link to the Pixabay photograph will be in the description below. I hope you can see that um, even though I have left out an awful lot of detail from the photograph, 
um, and also use my artistic license just to slightly change things and simplify them, um, that it still makes for an effective line drawing, um, which I'm hoping will work out to be a really nice painting as long as the washes go okay. I'm building up my shadows and my darks, just scribbling really, uh, but the scribbling is following my pencil sketch and that's why it was important for me to make sure that I had my pencil sketch lines across the foreground in the right place uh, because then I knew where I wanted to put in my darks and as the line drawing progressed um, I was working across it making sure that I was balancing up with the darks um, mostly around the lighthouse which is going to be the focal point of the painting um, and most of the detail actually is around that area. We've got the, going to have light patches where, for the sea and the water on either side. Um, some light on the rocks below um, the lighthouse. And all this should add to lead the eye to that focal point. Whereas the sky and the right corner of the foreground is going to have less detail in it um, in order to enable or allow the painting sort of room to breathe, if you see what I mean. So it's not completely detailed all over. And that's the beauty of a line and wash, is that you can work on the line work sort of nice and simply. And as I said earlier, it does nearly all the work of the painting, because when you come to paint, everything's there, and you're just following the lead of the painting and your reference photograph to try and... Uh, produce your own interpretation of the scene. Now here's my bit of artistic license. I decided in order to balance the scene that I needed some sort of shrubs and bushes across that wall that leads down from the lighthouse buildings and a couple of trees as well on this sort of causeway. Just small sort of scrubby trees but I just think they balance it out nicely. So that's my line work finished and now what I'm going to do is take some masking fluid and I'm going to um, paint masking fluid over the lighthouse buildings. You can see it here. It's difficult to see because my masking fluid is clear but I think you can see that I've got it painted over the buildings, the wall and the causeway and the pathway. And then I have to let my masking fluid dry completely. And once it's dry, I can come back and start to paint in some washes. I'm going to be painting them wet in wet. So the first thing I'm going to do is to use my large or extra large Pro Art Ron Ranson Harky brush or any large wash brush um, to wet the painting across all over, mostly making sure that the sky is really nice and wet because I'm going to be painting this wet in wet. I want a really nice flow of paint um, in order to create an atmospheric sky. So once I'm happy that my paper's wet enough, I'm taking a fairly rich amount of raw sienna across the page, both the sky and um, to warm up the landscape a little bit. Most of that will disappear, but it just gives me a good starting point for my sky. And this is Tube Consistency Indigo Payne's Grey and Cobalt Violet Deep Hue. Um, pulled across the whole sky, just keeping it nice and rich across the top. Um, I'm not too worried about it looking streaky at the moment and the way it's running down because I'm going to use my uh, misting spray. It's the type of misting spray that hairdressers use. You can find them anywhere online, um, on eBay, Amazon, that sort of thing. So I'm spraying it to get the wash to run and then I'm going to tip and tilt it until the sky begins to look the way I want it to look. This helps all the colours to just blend seamless, seamlessly and to sort of marry and mingle together. Um, I can go back in with a brush if I need to and add a bit more rich paint. I could spray it with water again, lay it flat, turn it upside down. Um, at this point, you do whatever you need to until the wash looks the way you want it to look. This is a flat brush and I'm feathering through my wash there and giving it some texture, some light, some smaller clouds near the bottom of the sky. Um, so it's adding some perspective 
and um, and light and depth to my sky, hopefully. This is perylene green. It's a Winsor & Newton colour and it's beautiful. And I'm sweeping that with my Harky brush across the foreground and just across the mid ground where I can see that there's grassy areas in my photograph. I'm keeping it really, really simple. Um, the line work is there to give me my detail. I'm just putting in swathes of colour at this stage. And then just a very watery mixture of my um, cobalt violet hue and um, my raw sienna across the rocks and just a few touches here and there to warm up the landscape a little bit and take away from some of those white patches, but I'm gonna leave most of them to keep it fresh and expressive. And then a clean, damp flat brush to lift out paint that has gone into my sea areas on either side of the um, lighthouse. So I'm removing the paint from that so that those areas will stand out and look lighter. At the moment they look a bit strange but once everything's dry I'll be putting in some distant hills and that should just bring those um, sea areas um, into the painting more and show you how much those light areas of sea really draw attention to the lighthouse. As you can see, um, my painting is flat now, so I've been painting on it flat. Once the wash got to the position where I wanted it to be, I laid the board flat to stop the wash running. And now I'm um, leaving it to dry, and here it is, nice and dry. So it's time now to uh, put in the last bit of detail before the masking fluid comes off. And that is, um, the headland that I mentioned before. Now I've mixed up a slightly darker colour, only slightly darker than the sky of Payne's Grey, Indigo and the Cobalt, um, Cobalt Violet Deep. Um, it's a Jackson's own brand artist quality paint. It's a lovely paint. And you can see bringing across that distant hill line and little island towards the right um, on the horizon line um, is beginning to bring this fairly complex composition together. I say a complex composition, all the elements are simple, but there are layers of landscape here. Um, but using a simple approach, I think it means that we can manage the complex composition in a simple way so that it's effective rather than confusing. I think sometimes if you put too much detail into both sky and landscape, um, then things can become a bit confusing. So just dropping in some slightly darker little bits of paint into that wet wash, just for a bit of slight variation. And now leaving this stage to dry. And once it's dry, I'm using the same mixture of indigo, Payne's grey and the cobalt violet deep hue. Um, and I'm pulling that across to really shadow over my foreground. Because of the wonderful transparent nature of watercolour, the perylene green is showing through this shadow colour. And I think it's ending up looking really effective. Um, and I'm obviously following the shadow areas of the photograph to really bring those um, across my painting because I think that they balance it up beautifully. And again, it sort of helps with this kind of more blank, empty part of the shadowed painting to lead the eye across to the lighthouse and the buildings. So apart from a bit of softening back here and there, I'm pretty happy with that. So now this part needs to dry completely and then I'll come back once it's dry and hopefully finish off the painting. So it's all fully dried and now I need to remove the masking fluid. So I'm carefully rubbing it off with my finger, a clean finger, um, and now you can see how nice and light 
the lighthouse looks compared to the sky and the hills and the foreground, etc. Um, I don't need to do very much to it because this is a simplified painting and in the photograph um, the lighthouse is, really stands out white against the, the twilight sky. I think I just need to put a little bit of detail to the top of the lighthouse. I'm going to do some crisscross lines um, for this kind of um, like mesh or guard around the light at the top of the lighthouse and just that's all it needs I think. Yep, that will do. Um, and now I'm going to use some indigo inky consistency, slightly paler for this front building, the rest slightly darker, just for the roofs. They're lovely, like dark grey slate roofs, very typical of uh, beautiful Irish uh, cottages like this or buildings. Um, and I think it it works beautifully against the, the soft greens and the and the soft sort of um, purpley shadow and sky colours, making sure that the back roof is nice and dark. So now just using my three quarter inch flat brush and putting a little bit of um, the sort of purpley colour, quite watery and raw sienna across the causeway and walls and path that leads from the lighthouse whilst leaving the lighthouse and the buildings white at the moment. And now this is very watery um, purple across a few of the buildings and there'll be a touch on the lighthouse just to add a little bit of shadow. Not much, it's subtle, but it's just enough to sort of give a little bit more depth and dimension to those buildings. And that's finished. Um, I shall remove the tape and have a look at it and see how it looks with its clean white border. And for some reason, when we see a clean white border like this, it's a bit like seeing it framed or in a mount. We can see if it needs anything else doing to it. And I think it's OK. I'm quite happy with that. Um, I think that it's effectively worked to simplify the photograph while still retaining a sort of veneer of, of, of complexity. But it's still just lots of very simple, very easy stages put together. And together they build up into um, this really nice um, loose watercolour painting. The colours are a little bit brighter in real life um, because it's a bit sunny in my studio today. So this is closer to the, the colours in the finished painting. And I'm very happy with the way the cobalt violet deep hue and the perylene green are the real stars of the show here. That and the clean unpainted paper that we preserved with the masking fluid. Um, so I hope that you have been able to see how I managed to sort of simplify this photograph um, and still managed to turn it into a reasonably complex looking painting. But what it is, in fact, is just lots of very simple stages um, put together. So thanks so much for watching and supporting the channel by clicking on the like and subscribing. Um, and thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel too. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.